All right, so here we've got one that we actually have to draw a smooth curve through. So uh, basically, the figure depicts the number of uh, calls placed each hour since 2 a.m. to a sheriff's department. Sketch a smooth curve through the scatter plot with no more inflection points than the number suggested by the scatter plot. Then, at what time or times is the number of calls a minimum and a maximum? Are there any other times when a graph appears to have a zero slope? If so, when? Estimate the slope of your smooth curve at 4, 10, 18, and 20, and then use information in parts A through D to sketch a graph depicting the rate of change of calls each hour. Label both axes. And on this one, I don't know if I will do all four of those. I might just do a couple. And we've already, you know, kind of, you know, shown that we can we can do that. It takes a long time, but we can do it. So let's first uh, draw our smooth curve. Okay. So uh, let's get our smooth curve going so it looks like it's coming down all right so something like that okay then uh says uh what time or times is the number of calls a minimum and a maximum all right well well that looks like the minimum about right there so four and that's hours since 2 a.m. So it looks like then uh, min is about 6 a.m. And the max is going to be, you know, about, I don't know, right there, which is, I don't know, let's see, make sure I get that. 20. Uh, so 20 plus 2 is 22. So that's 10 o'clock p.m. Okay, so that would be uh, what I think are the min and max. Again, just based on the graph, that looks to be about the max there. That looks to be about the min there, and it's rough, you know, close to where where it is. Okay. Uh, next one: <clears throat> Are there any times when a graph appears to have zero slope? If so, when? Um, okay, well, zero slope. Let's draw it. We'll have a zero slope there. That almost looks like. Um, might be one here, maybe. Can't draw very well there, but uh, maybe there. Um, could we have another one? I don't know. Let's see. What time would that be? Is that nine? Maybe that's the point at nine, ten, eleven. So zero slope at 11 a.m. Okay, now could we have another one maybe here? Because I think that comes up and then comes down. So I think that might be a, a point where it could be. <clears throat> so I don't know, let's call that I don't know, between 12 and two. So maybe that's, okay, that's 12, 14, so what, 13, 14, 15, so I don't know, is that 3 o'clock then, I guess, maybe? Oh, 14 minus 2, yeah, that's 14 minus 2, so that would be roughly 2 o'clock. And then we have, the, of course, the one here and here. Um, I think that might be all of them because nothing else looks to be. But I think I think that has a turn. That has a turn. So I think because of those, those two are going to be also our turning points. So what else does it ask? Uh, da, 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 estimate the slope. And let's uh, do two of them. Let's not do all. Let's do at t equals four, yeah, we got that one that's probably going to be close to zero is what we called it, but you know, let's not do four. Uh, 10, how about 10 and 18? Yeah, we'll do 10 and 18. All right, so <clears throat> let's get some shapes going here. So we'll have uh, roughly 10, goes about there. Let's draw another one at 18. That's roughly there. And now we need to draw some slopes. 
Uh, so that one's coming down. So that one looks like it's going to be a negative. Oh, it's not going to let me change it. There we go. Maybe. We'll call it that. And so let's get us a horizontal one. horizontal maybe all right so uh looks like maybe our point would be uh 10 comma and here's 30 we'll call it 35 and so then that other one would be uh let's go down there and that might be uh 12 and maybe hmm, 32 okay and so that slope's going to be uh it's negative so 35 minus 32 over 10 minus uh 12 and so that's going to be basically a negative one three and a half, three halves we'll call it negative three halves okay all right so that would be uh, what I would assume would be that. And that's going to be calls per hour. So we're basically decreasing by one and a half calls per hour there. Okay. All right. Uh, now the other one we said was going to be up there. So let's put that about there. And so that looks like we'd have a point of, uh, well, it's not quite there. It looks like this point got moved. That's better. Now let's put that on that. Maybe there. So we could call that one. Uh, let's see, what's that? 18 comma... Oh, 63 maybe, and then we could have another one. Uh, let's, and again, I'm just, I know it's going to have that point, so now we just have to get our other graph to fit in there. What do we want to use for our line? Do we want that as our tangent, or is it further out maybe? Uh, let's call that good. And so now we can come over and maybe we can use 16 and 54. And so our slope here is going to be 61 minus uh, 54 over 18 minus 16. And so uh, what we're going to get there is seven halves calls per hour. Okay, so that's a positive. So it's increasing by seven halves call per hour. And so that's that's what we'll get there. And again, uh, is this exact what they probably have for the answer key in a book? Probably not. But that's again what we're what we're getting. So, all right. So now use the information in parts A through D to sketch a graph depicting the rate of change of calls placed each hour, and label our graphs. All right. So, uh, what do we have? Well, let's again. I'm not going to get too exact. I'm just going to get it in a ballpark here. So here it's uh, a decreasing at this point. We're going to have a zero. So we'll have a zero here. And we'll have another zero about here. Another zero uh, about there. Where did the other one go? And then we'll have another zero further out here. Okay. So that's decreasing. And then it gets close to zero. Uh, or it's negative, but it's, you know, it's getting, it's increasing, I guess you should say, because it's negative, it's increasing, getting closer to zero. 
And so it's going to be something like that. And then it hits the zero. Now it's increasing until we get close to zero here. We have an inflection point about there, so halfway between. And so it's going to have something like that. <clears throat> now, between uh, here and here, we're going to have another inflection point, And it's going to be negative at that point. So it's going to be a small negative. It's not going to be very big. And so then from here to here, we're going to have an inflection point about halfway. It's going to be positive. So it's going to come up. And then it's going to come back down. And now it's, it's decreasing and, and it's going down. So then it's going to go like, and it maybe has a curve up, maybe not. So we'll have something like that. Okay. And so again, this is going to be our S of T prime. And that's going to be calls per hour. And this is going to be X. And it's going to be hours since 2 AM. Okay. All right, so that's that's how I would do that one. Again, you know, we're we're just really grossly estimating all of this, so it's it's as good as we can get on these, and that's what we have. All right, so let's go and see what we have on the next one. All right, so on this one, the capacity of jails in the southwestern state was increasing during the 90s. The average daily population of one jail during the 90s is shown below. For which input value does the derivative fail to exist? Explain. Well, if we look at that, <clears throat> when we have a sharp point here, that's going to be the point where it fails to exist. So it fails at x equals 5 due to the sharp corner. Okay. Um, now let's see. Uh, and and you, and we know why, because our slope on one side doesn't equal the slope on another. So maybe we should put that uh, slope on one side does not equal slope on other side. Okay, so that's just kind of one of those things we know. So we didn't really have to put it, but that's that's kind of the reasoning there. All right, so we have now, it looks like a cubic and then a linear, okay? So that cubic part from here to here, that's gonna give us a quadratic. And this being linear, that's going to give us a constant value. So let's go ahead and draw this. Now, is anything negative? So we're increasing. It's positive. We get close to zero. We have a zero probably uh, somewhere in here. I'm not sure exactly. I'd say it's about there. And then we have it's low, almost zero, then it increases, increases, increases. And so uh, we don't have any point that actually goes below the axis, I don't think. It's going to be all positive. This is f prime of x, and that's inmates uh, per year. And this is x years uh, since 1990. So uh, our slope is. Uh, very steep here, and then it goes almost to zero at this point here. So that means it's decreasing the slope, but it's still positive. And then at this point, now it's going from almost to zero to it's really getting steep. So it's going to go up now. And then at this point here, you know, we know it has to stop. It's going to be an open circle at that point because we can't have that piece. And again, if we measured all these slopes, this curve might actually start down here, and this might, you know, only go up to here. We, I don't have this probably drawn quite to scale. And then we have this slope, which it looks like from 900 to a thousand, maybe. It's going to be it looks like 100 divided by five, so 25. So wherever 25 is, uh, it's going to be our other point. And so here it's going to be something like that, okay? And it disappears, okay? 
And with this one, uh, this one will actually have have the thing because it's the slope we're going to call it uh, at that point. And so we'll have the closed circle here and the open circle here. All right, so what else? Is that all? Uh, sketch slope. Okay, so I think that's it. So let's pause there and we'll come back some more.